Who controls the past controls the future. Who controls the present controls the past. George Orwell. I'm sure we all are familiar with that quotation from 1984 by now. We could probably follow along with chapter and verse from the party handbook that seems to have been handed out to every uh, political psychopath in the uh, past few decades who have made it their life's quest, seemingly, to take 1984 and make it into reality. And I'm sure you, if you were anything like me, if you read this book as a schoolboy, low those many decades ago, you might have thought, like I did, that this is just fiction. I mean, it makes a good story, but double think? Come on, people can't really hold two contradictory ideas in their head at the same time. Or uh, controlling the past to control the future, to control the present, you control the past. Uh, again, it sounds fanciful, and I understand the concept of memory holding and things, but uh, again, you, I mean, it's just a story. It's not real, right? Well, as I say, as we've discovered in the past few decades, politicians are finding a way to make every single thing that George Orwell talked about relevant to our present-day society, and perhaps there is no better demonstration of the validity of this particular idea than in the realm of climate science. Allow me to demonstrate. The RSS dataset adjustment that just came out looks extremely suspicious. What was wrong about 1998 to the present, but correct before 1998? Hmm, a little moment of zen for you here, and here's some sort of graph showing major revisions upward after 1998, TLT, temperature, anomaly, RSS v3, RSS v4. What on earth is going on here? All right, if you are lost in the woods at this point, allow me to exhort you to go back to what is the average global temperature, a video I released a couple of years ago that I think is particularly informative on this subject of average global temperature, which is deceptively complex, more nuanced and complex than you might think at first, at first glance. Uh, so I do suggest you go back and watch this video in its entirety. And if you don't, you uh, run the risk of becoming a David Suzuki. So where are you getting your information? I'm not a climatologist. I wait for the uh, climatologist to tell us what they, uh, they're thinking. Well, Do you want to uh, respond to that, Bill? Sure, yeah. Uh, UAHRSS had crew GIS data shows a 17-year flat trend, which suggests there may be something Sorry, wrong well, <clears throat> with I, the I, CO2 I, warming theory. Yeah. What is the reference? I don't... Uh... Well, they're the main data sets that IPCC use. <laughs> Fail, Mr. Suzuki, fail. Um, for those who don't know, David Suzuki is a Canadian uh, science commentator who has in the past actually advocated for climate skeptics who dare to challenge the, uh, the dogma of climate science, the heretics out there, to be literally jailed. He has said you should go to jail if you are, I believe he said specifically, a politician who expresses any skepticism whatsoever of what the... Uh, the holy consensus of climate science uh, uh, tells us. And the big irony here is he does not even know the names of the temperature data sets from which the average global temperature is constructed. What an absolute outrage, but perhaps not surprising, perhaps just reflective of the general population. Uh, uh, not one person in a thousand would know anything whatsoever about those temperature data sets, and why would they? Except for the fact that every, uh, ask a thousand people, no one will know what the, the, those data sets are, or what they stand for, or where they are, who constructs them, or in what way, but everyone will have an opinion about climate change. Isn't that interesting how that works? So, if you do want to know more about those different data sets, and what they are, and how they're Constructed and all of that, please do go back and watch this uh, very important video from a couple of years ago. I'll put the link in the show notes, of course, as always. Uh, but long story short, yes, there are different temperature data sets that are measured and calculated in different ways. And uh, obviously, one of them is RSS. That stands for Remote Sensing uh, Systems. And that is a satellite temperature data set, one of the quality class one temperature data sets that we talked about here, along with the other satellite temperature data set that's mainly used, the UAH, University of Alabama at Huntsville. And uh, the GIS that he mentioned in there was uh, the Goddard Institute of Space Studies uh, temperature data, data set that is of the quality class three that we went through again in this video. So a much lower quality class of data set. But see, there's an interesting problem uh, when it comes to climate alarmism, which is that the satellite uh, data sets have shown 
if not zero, which is for all intents and purposes what the UAH uh, trend shows here in this graph, uh, at least remarkably close to zero, which is what the uh, uh, RSS uh, temperature trend shows in this graph uh, over the past 17, 18 years. From 1998, from just after the El Nino in 1998 to just before the El Nino in 2017, showing basically a zero degree flat trend. The dreaded pause, which the uh, global warming alarmists have been absolutely apoplectic about over the past several years, trying to find different, uh, throwing out literally dozens of different explanations for the pause. Why has uh, global average temperature paused in its uh, warming trend? What's going on? And then ultimately trying to come to the conclusion, actually, no, there was no pause. Te temperatures were rising enorm uh, enormously all the time. Um, and the lie was told by the satellite temperature uh, da data sets, which show, again, almost zero or pretty much zero, statistically zero warming trends over that period of time. And, and look, we're, we're not even talking about tenths of a degree. We're talking about halves of a tenths of a degree scale here. So, I mean, obviously, this is an exceptionally small amount of warming. The big trend here is the NASA, the GIS temp da uh, data set here, which shows, a, uh, again, when you look at it overall, this is not a huge degree of warming trend, but it's obviously much more dramatic. There is a warming trend in that, that's clearly visible in the GIST uh, temperature data set, but not in the two ta satellite temperature data sets. So that presents a bit of a problem for the alarmists, as I say. Obviously, the satellite temperature data sets are extremely important, and, uh, and the alarmists want them to show what they want them to show. So it was that earlier this year, January of 2017, Roy Spencer, who, along with Dr. John Christie, runs the UAH, the University of Alabama in Huntsville uh, satellite temperature data set, came up with a prediction about how they were going to solve this problem of the flat trends in the satellite temperature uh, data sets. And he uh, shared his prediction with Tony Heller, who recorded it here on the Real Climate Science blog uh, back in January of this year, uh, where he said, I expect there will soon be a revised TLT, that's temperature lower troposphere for those of you playing along at home, TLT product from RSS, which shows enhanced warming too. Here's what I'm predicting. One, neither John Christie nor I will be asked to review the paper. Two, it will quickly sail through peer review, or our UAH version 6 paper is still not in print nearly one year after submission. And three, it will have many authors, including climate model people and the usual model pundits, for example, Santer, Ben Santer, which will supposedly lend legitimacy to the new data adjustments. Let's see how many of my three predictions come true, Roy. So what uh, Dr. Spencer is saying here is this RSS temperature data set is a problem. Again, it shows almost zero trend whatsoever over the past uh, 18 years or so. So they're going to revise this data, which, again, this is not talking about making adjustments to the way this is calculated now, but retroactively adjusting the data so that it looks like a much more uh, alarming trend, warming trend, uh, warming this uh, trend in the past. Well, guess what? That's exactly what happened. So if you've uh, if you followed along for the last couple of weeks, you'll see there has been a new major correction to satellite data shows 140% faster warming since 1998. A new paper published in the Journal of Climate reveals that the lower part of the Earth's atmosphere, the troposphere, uh, the first 7,000 meters or so of the atmosphere uh, for the uh, humanity's sake. For our sake, it's probably the most important part of the uh, climate, and this is what it's measuring. The TLT, temperature lower troposphere, has warmed much faster since 1979 than scientists relying on satellite data had previously thought. Researchers from Remote Sensing Systems, RSS, based in California, have released a substantially revised version of their lower tropospheric temperature record. After correcting for problems caused by the decaying orbit of satellites, as well as other factors, they have produced a new record showing 36% faster warming since 1979 and nearly 140% faster, i.e. 2.4 times larger warming since 1998. This is in comparison to their previous version 3 of the TLT data published in 2009. So, one thing to take note, this is revising data that was itself only presented eight years ago. So in eight years, their calculations have changed by a factor of uh, 2.4. That's, I mean, that, that should give you some pause for thought about how accurate these, uh, these, these temperature data sets are in the first place, uh, given that these adjustments that are made retroactively every few years can 
have such dramatic effects. But also, let's keep in mind what we're talking about when we talk about these scales. Again, this scale that we're looking at here is uh, less than one-tenth of a degree, one-half of one-tenth of a degree Celsius. And this is a temperature anomaly, so measured against a mean and blah, blah, blah. Again, please do see the average global temperature video for more about how they actually construct this and what this actually means. But so 140% faster than pretty much zero is still pretty much zero. But anyway, uh, so this is what it looks like. And this is uh, what the, the Matthias here on uh, Twitter was tweeting about. And so this is the uh, the, the old data set uh, in gray and the new data set in red and showing the difference between them. Interestingly, very, very, very close correspondence, seemingly eyeballing it uh, here in the fir first half of this uh, series. And then towards the end, Ooh, very much larger divergence. Interesting. So you might be interested to know, well, okay, so, oh, wow, it's it's warming at an alarmingly faster rate. Again, if you look at the scale here, we're dealing with two tenths of a degree Celsius. And so if you look at the adjustments, these are, again, fractions of a tenth of a degree um, adjustments for the most part, but still. Um, so how did they do this? Well, you, of course, the first thing you want to do is go to the actual study itself. So it's published in the American Meteorology Society, a satellite-derived lower tropospheric atmospheric temperature data set using an optimized adjustment for diurnal effects by Carl Mears and Frank J. Wentz of Remote Sensing Systems. Okay, and there's an abstract here, um, probably mostly gobbledygook for 99.99% of the population, but it does give some indication of what they're doing here. And long story short, the change that they discovered in the uh, warming trend is primarily due to changes in the adjustments for drifting local measurement time. So orbital decay of satellites, and they, they have a different way of measuring diurnal uh, uh, diurnal effects of um, the, the satellite measurements. And as a result, boom, new, new temperatures. We've adjusted what we thought the temperatures were in the past. Okay, interesting. So you might want even more data about how they do this and maybe some, some graphs, some examples, some, you know, so, some of the meat and potatoes. So you'd would go to the PDF, but of course you can't go to the PDF because it's behind a paywall. So $35 for a 30 day uh, membership to AMS or their, uh, their service in order to get the PDF. But luckily, if you go to the remote sensing system homepage, remss.com, uh, you can find this FAQ about the version four update on the lower tropospheric data set that they just released. And it does provide some more information about the paper and how they arrived at this new data set, how it was constructed, basically what differed and how the adjustments were were made, um, what adjustments were made, how it affects uh, correspondence with weather balloon data and stuff like that. So some degree of detail there, um, probably enough to satisfy, again, most of the population if you really want to dig your teeth into this. Long story short, corrections for orbital decay and other such things have made them adjust the temperature. But this is the thing that Matthias raises here that is at least interesting. This data set adjustment. Again, it's major revision upward after 1998. That's the, uh, that's, that's the title of this graph as given by carbonbrief.org. Major revisions upward after 1998. There were revisions before 1998. The temperature record for this satellite uh, data set, I believe, starts in 1979. But um, very, very slight adjustments be before 1998. Suddenly after 1998, very large adjustments, or at least significantly larger adjustments. Why? Why is that? What what happened in 1998 precisely that threw off the uh, the satellite uh, d uh, orbital decay measurement adjustments that they had been making? Um, why did they suddenly have to make this new adjustment to to take account for it? And why did it affect post 1998 specifically? Kind of a strange thing. And ultimately, again, if you if you look closely, uh, again, it amounts to pretty much nothing on the pre 1998 scale. Post 1998, there's a definite, discernible, viewable, eyeballable uh, upward adjustment in the data. So the, the the net effect of this is that the latter part of this uh, time series becomes significantly higher, and the earlier part stays about the same. In fact, actually, at the beginning of the data set, it's significantly below, or at least discernibly below, uh, the, the previous version. So what they've done is they've revised the past slightly down, slightly cooler. It was a little bit cooler a couple of decades ago, guys, but it was a little bit warmer than we thought just a few years ago. 
And the net effect of this is, ever so subtly, but discernibly, it does increase the overall trend of the warming of the past 20, 30, 40 years. Pick your, um, pick your time series. Isn't that interesting? Well, just by that itself, that would not be necessarily anything untoward. Well, okay, they made some adjustments and it's the net effect is they've warmed the present and cooled the past and it creates a bigger warming trend. But it isn't just this RSS V3 to V4 adjustment in which we can find that, discern that, uh, that pattern. For example, we can look at some other examples like the uh, US uh, surface temperature measurements that are provided by NASA, uh, where, hmm, if you look at the measured data, the actual raw data for these temperatures that they're, uh, th this data set is constructed from, you get the blue line. If you look at the reported, the final, the adjusted data after they run it through their little calculators, and again, please do see this average global temperature video so you can find out more about why. Why don't we just take the raw data? No, no, you have to calculate the, uh, the average temperature. You can't just use raw data. And once they do their little calculations, well, look at that. The past gets cooler and the present stays about as warm, in fact, a little bit warmer than the raw data shows. Again, so again, the net effect is to show a more, much more, in this case, much more dramatic warming trend. You start down here, you end up here, as opposed to starting out here and ending up here. Again, a much more dramatic trend line, which shows, hmm, wow, global warming is much uh, more out of control than we thought, guys. Look, look how quickly the planet is warming. Uh, again, just looking at the difference between the raw and uh, final data, you get this, where, again, in the past, the uh, once the adjustments are made, again, the past is consistently cooled, and then the 1930s and 40s about the same, and then after 1960, it starts to take off, and the adjustments are pushing it up and up and up, and it breaks through that zero degree barrier around 20 years ago. Interesting. So, uh, again, it's not just that data either. It's not just US data, it's also global land temperature data uh, from NASA. Uh, the GISTEMP data, which shows, once again, the 2000 version of this data. So just 17 years ago, they were telling us that this was the temperature anomaly again from the from the mean that they're cal calculating this from um, is the blue line, and it shows this this kind of warming trend. But they've adjusted that data in 2016 to show a cooler past and a more warm present. Interesting. So again, that. That's, that trend line becomes steeper. It becomes a, a bigger trend, uh, more dramatic warming. Do you start to see a pattern here? Every single data set that you look at, they make these adjustments every few years and the adjustments consistently push the present, uh, push the past down and the present up. And it may, may just be a slight amount, but it does certainly increase that trend line. Well, what does that tell us? Well, it actually starts to add up. And when you actually crunch the numbers, you find study finds temperature adjustments account for nearly all of recent warming in climate data sets. And this is about a new study that has been published uh, that I will, of course, throw the link in the show notes along with everything else here on the validity of NOAA, NASA, NASA and Hadley Crew Global Average Surface Temperature Data and the validity of EPA CO2 endangerment finding. And uh, this is by Dr. J James P. Wallace III, Joseph S. Dalio, and Craig Idzo, and it's been re reviewed and uh, signed off on by a number of officials and uh, EPA officials, Michigan State University, uh, um, uh, Atmospheric and Ocean Oceanic Sciences University of Colorado, etc. And this study shows some pretty remarkable things, but uh, perhaps most notably the fact that these Global average surface temperature gassed data produced by NOAA, NASA, and uh, Hadley are not uh, not reliable. And in fact, that they have been adjusted uh, to reflect, as we've seen before, uh, always reflecting a cooler past and a warmer present to uh, basically make a more dramatic warming effect. So basically, the study says it was found that each new version of the global average surface temperature data, each new version, because of the adjustments, has nearly always exhibited a steeper warming linear trend over its entire history, 
and it was nearly always accomplished by systematically removing the previously existing cyclical temperature pattern, up and down, up and down, up and down. You smooth out that up and down, and you make a more dramatic up at the end, and wow, look at the global warming taking off. So that's Again, this is not just an observation that you kind of, oh, wow, isn't that interesting? When you look at the temperature data sets and you actually study them, you find that this is consistent throughout the temperature data sets. So as uh, one of the authors uh, of this study says, uh, is quoted as saying, uh, nearly all of the warming they are now showing are in the adjustments. Each data set pushed down the 1940s warming and pushed up the current warming. So this is a pretty remarkable thing that we are seeing. It is the systematic changing of the past in order to change our view of the present and control the future. Does this sound familiar to you? The, no, no, no. The past was cooler than you think, think it was, and the present is warmer than you think it is. And thus, we can see that the trend is that the future is going to be hot as hell unless you hand over your carbon ties to the United Nations, right? An interesting, interesting narrative. And again, there's lots and lots of data to go through here. I'll put in the, the, uh, the raw data for the actual data for this, these graphs as well so that you can go and verify that. But... Um, you know, actually, the funny thing is, the long story short, uh, these, this new, newly revised RSS satellite data that uh, they've adjusted to show much more warming since 1998 than previously thought, actually, it still shows less global warming <laughs> than the climate models. Surprise, surprise. And you can see that here. This is the IPCC 1990 uh, projection of uh, global warming over this, this period up to 2015-16. Uh, projected... Uh, the projected uh, uh, warming trend was this red line. The actual observed warming trend, even with the new adjustments to this RSS satellite data, shows is this blue line, which is not only below that red trend line, but below their least, uh, uh, their minimum warming trend project projection from 1990. So the IPCC, again, com consistently, completely wrong. In fact, spending almost the entirety of the last 20 years of uh, the, the data set out completely outside of the, the bounds of the projection. And yet we're expected to believe that, no, trust us, guys, they've got it right this time. And when they say, you know, two degrees of warming by 2100, you, I mean, it's gospel truth. It's settled science. Uh, another interesting thing to note from here, of course, is the uh, the huge spike upward that occurred in 1998 during the El Nino, and then the huge spike upward that occurred last year during the El Nino. And between those two El Nino is that 18-year, seven-month, I believe, uh, almost exactly 18-year, seven-month pause, where there was no statistical uh, warming trend line at all. It was zero degree trend, uh, which again, is particularly significant because one-third of all anthropogenic forcings that have been produced in the history of the human species were produced in that 18-year and 7-month interval. And yet it produced a statistical zero trend of warming. Do you see, do you see any potential problems for the climate alarmists there and the, the narrative that they're trying to construct from this data? Anyway... Uh, I, I guess there's only one thing that we can cl conclude from this fact that the, uh, the newly revised uh, satellite temperature data, the RSS uh, temperature data, still falls below the boundaries of the projection from the IPCC. Just means you're going to have to try ho harder, boys. You're going to have to change that past a little bit more so that we can control the present and, well, ultimately control the future. Crazy stuff. Links in the show notes as always. James Corbett, CorbettReport.com.